working. It looks like we're live now. Yep. All right, we're live. Hi, everybody. We got a few more minutes. We're going to wait a little while. Whoa, a projectile saliva just came out of my mouth. But uh, <laughs> we're going to wait a few more minutes uh, so that everybody has a chance to arrive. And I am going to put a link out on Facebook right now telling people that we are live. So, because Todd is going to be sharing some awesome, awesome stuff about how he jumps over fire and, <laughs> <laughs> and carries bags of rocks or something, uh, something like that, huh, Todd? Oh, yeah, good times. <laughs> or maybe it's buckets of rocks. I don't know. I just heard something about, like, a sandbag in five miles, and I said, you're a psycho. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say we are live. Come and hang out with us. All right. There is the Facebook update. Let's see. Let's see who all confirmed. We got like 60 people that confirmed that they were going to come to this. So that's pretty wow. good. Yeah. 35 maybes and, you know, a couple thousand people got an email from me about this, so, so, Todd, you're a, you're in the spotlight right now. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. All right, we'll we'll uh we'll get started in one minute, guys. Go go get a notepad. Go get all distractions. You know, shut the door to your office. Turn the TV off. Turn your cell phone off, because I really do. I want you guys to pay attention. Uh, to what Todd's going to be sharing tonight because he really does have a lot of value to share with us. He's been through an incredible journey. I've had the privilege of being there since almost the very beginning of his journey. Um, and I know, you know, Todd's a stand-up guy, and he's just, you know, he's just going to share a crap ton of value with us. So, and I know it's, it's going to help everyone um, watching this. And I hope you guys are taking notes. So it is 6.30. We're going to get started. I'm going to try not to keep you more than 30 minutes. We're going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, but at any time, if you want to ask questions, I encourage you, go to the, if, you're, if you're viewing this hangout on my website on ripple.net, scroll to the bottom of the page, and you're going to see a spot um, called Live Fire. That's where you can post your questions, your comments live, and we're going to give the last, like, 7 to 10 minutes of the hangout uh, answering your guys' questions personally. You can ask Todd, you know, how he prepares for his Spartan races, how he trains for that, or how he lost 40 pounds and stuff. But it's really cool. You can post your questions live at the bottom of this page. I mean, I just had, like, an ounce of the chicken in it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, you can ask Todd questions live at the bottom of the page at the end of this call, the last 7 to 10 minutes. He's going to answer those for you. So I encourage you to, to really get your questions posted at the bottom early so that you get in the queue of asking because I really do want to keep this to a, about 30 minutes. So, Todd? Yeah. Welcome, buddy. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to see you, man. <laughs> yeah, as you as well, man. So just a, just a quick background. Todd, you joined Rip Club. You were like one of my original – Guys who signed up. I mean, you're a veteran member. How long have you been in Rift Club? Oh gosh, uh, it's been probably close to two years, uh, if not two years. Yeah, yeah. I think I, yeah, I've been coaching a little over two years. It was two years in June. So, so yeah, you've been there since the beginning, man. It's, it's been quite the ride. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's probably so. I started. The first round of P90X that I actually completed, <laughs> I started in July of uh, 2011. So, and it was within a month of starting that. So, yeah, I guess about two years ago. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so if you guys if you guys don't know Todd, obviously you might have seen from the title of this uh, this hangout, he lost like 40 pounds. He 
these Spartan races all over the place. And Todd, are you going to be in South Carolina with us in November? If I can swing it, I'll be there. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 100 committed yet, though. Oh, that's all right. Wait, I just heard a Rip Club member say, "I'm not committed yet." No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool, man. Todd does these Spartan races all over the place. I think you might get your trifecta this year or next year. Uh, it. Uh, if I can get to a super this year, then I'll get it this year. If not, they'll have all of them here in Texas next year and. We'll be able to get perfectors without leaving the state, so I'm looking forward to that. Nice, that would be sweet. Yeah, I want. I'm gonna come down to Texas and do one with you. I think it'd be fun. Definitely. Uh, but but I want to get started here, Todd. I just want you to go ahead and share. You know, a, a lot of people who are here maybe um, confused as to how to get started, and so I want I want you to share real quick where you where you started out. What what habits did you it got you to where you do not want to be. You know, you know what I mean. Like what? What made me make a change in the first place? Basically. Sort of. Sort of what were the events that led up to you deciding that you needed to make a change in your life? Right. A um, people, that a lot of people they're they don't even know how to get started. And you know, I'd like you to share why you wanted to change, but also yeah, the events that led up to you wanting to change. So. Okay, sure. So, um, I mean, I, you know, I've always been really active. Um, my wife and I had uh, twins in in January of 2011, and uh, when when she was, you know, when we first saw her doctor, you know, he was telling her basically to eat as much as she could and to, you know, that she wasn't uh, really able to exercise because it was too much of a complication with the twins and stuff like that. So somehow, I guess, you know, I kind of took what he was telling her to heart myself. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to me, Doc? <laughs> exactly. Uh, I got I got pretty lazy and I ate pretty much everything in sight. So um, I got up to 207, I think, was where I weighed myself. At least I, I probably weighed a little bit more than that at some point. But um, and you know my my dad's dad, my grandfather was. Uh, I believe dead of a heart attack by the time he was my age at that point, which was 37, oh, wow. um, 38. And so, you know, with the kids and, um, and, and everything being the way that it was, you know, I wanted to be around for a long time and, and get to see them grow up and have their own kids and have grandkids and all that stuff. And so I just went on a real good trajectory. Um, and I recognized that and, you know, finally decided that uh, that I needed to do something different, and it had to be drastic, or else it wasn't gonna really stick. So, um, you know, and I'd had P90X uh, for a while, and actually tried it, you know, three or four times, couldn't get past about the third week. <laughs> I, I always loved to hear uh, how many times people have tried P90X. Yeah, I, I think. By the time I finished it, it was probably the fifth time I started it. So, yeah. um, but and the only reason I think that I was able to do that this time was I got to that same point honestly, and you know I felt like I was getting stronger, but I didn't see the physical transformation that mm -hmm. I had hoped for and that I saw in the infomercials and all this kind of thing. So, um, I started um, just kind of browsing online. Uh, and stumbled across uh, a YouTube video of, of you. <laughs> and then somehow we ended up talking either through that or on the P90X page or something like that. And so yeah. um, really following somebody that had already been through it, um, who had made a transformation like the one that I had a goal to achieve, and that had a template that I could follow and really just copy and paste. You know, I mean, I was able to, uh, to follow the nutrition plan that, that my coach, Coach Todd, uh, laid out for me and, and that he had followed. And it took the mystery out of it. It made it easier to manage. Um, and all of a sudden, I started getting results, which just fed – 
the desire to stay more committed, and you know, it's it's really an evolutionary thing. Um, you, you know, you kind of become more aware of your body, and you listen to it, and you understand, you know, the benefit of the exercise, and it's not a, it's not a chore, it's not a punishment, it's something you look forward to because it makes you feel good. <laughs> And the same thing with the food. You get to the point where, you know, you. I mean, yeah, I missed my pizza and my burgers at first, and I clung on to them. But I got to the point where I craved the healthier, lighter foods. I knew, you know, how many times a day I needed to eat. I could eyeball how much food I needed to eat based on, you know, repetition and and just doing it over and over again. So. Uh, kind of gets to the point where it gets second nature. Yeah. Something uh, that I that I noticed that I that I'd like to sort of dig deeper on. Haha <laughs> dig deeper. But uh said when you when you finally, you know, focused on the nutrition plan, you started seeing results. Now you were playing play every day as well, but um, a lot of people they get started follow the nutrition plan Play every day, but the results just won't come. So, so how how quickly do you see results personally? And what recommendation would you have to those people who are not seeing the result or they're doing everything right? Well, so uh, for one thing, I did. You know, I was following the nutrition plan in the P90X guidebook the way that I interpreted it. To start with, so I think that was was part of my challenge. Was I was doing exactly what I thought that they meant for me to do by the way I rated myself with their tools and everything. But I was eating like three thousand plus calories a day, and <laughs> that was my mistake, too, man. That I, and I'm like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to. I felt like I was eating way more food than I needed, and I was getting groggy and having a hard time finishing my meals, but. Um, you know, so at that point, I wasn't really seeing results. Uh, when I started following the um, the 50, 30, 20 guide that you put out and the uh, tracking my macronutrients on my fitness pal, um, that's when I started seeing results. And, you know, I could get to the point where if I was really on point, I'd lose about a pound a day. Um, if, uh, you know, that wasn't for long periods of time, but, you know, to give you an example, I think I lost uh, basically 23 pounds in that first round of P90X, um, and then, you know, I did some more of that, uh, P90X2, so in the, in the 90-day period there, I only lost 15 pounds, but it was, you know, that next 15, and it was body fat that was coming down. Um, mm -hmm. And then you know, I did Asylum, I started doing the races, and eventually when I did Ultimate Reset, that was the first time that I got you know, below 9% body fat. The six-pack was well-pronounced, you know, and that's a nutrition-only program. I wasn't even exercising at that point. So, um, you know, and that was, I think by itself, that was 12 pounds, uh, you know, in, a, in 21 days. Um, so it varies depending on where your focus is. Um, you know, sometimes when I'm training for a race coming up or, you know, something of that nature, um, you know, weight is a factor, but I may be more focused on making sure that I have enough energy uh, to fuel myself, and that's a, a different balance. So, um, you know, it's, that's one of the things that's cool about all of these programs is that there, you can customize them within each program, but then there's so many different ones to choose from, depending on what your goals are and what it is you're trying to achieve. Yeah. So what, what would you recommend to the person who is doing everything right with nutrition, press and play on their workouts, but is not seeing results? Um, well, it, it, you got to maintain consistency, um, for one thing. And that's, you know, consistency in doing the exercises, making sure that, that you're doing them, at an intensity level that you know is is true that you're not kind of halfway doing it. <laughs> That's one thing, 
Um, the other thing is that you might have to tweak your nutrition, you know, um, it, and there's all sorts of um, sorts of information that's available, you know, to, to help you depending on what the situation is. You know, you might be feeling what, like where you're at a plateau, you had been losing weight, um, and then you stop losing weight, you're feeling fatigue. In those cases, you might even have to add a couple hundred calories. Um, you know, of the, of the right type of food, and then your body will start kicking in again. So, um, you know, I think that if you focus on day-to-day -day and you're trying to track your results on that micro of a level, you're going to end up frustrated sometimes. And, and, you know, I think if you're focused more on following the program, eating healthy, getting your exercise in, getting enough rest so that your body can repair itself, um, and, and by that I mean sleep. <laughs> <laughs> not watching TV. Exactly. That's not rest. Um, and, you know, and then just leveraging the support system. That's a big, big part of it, because chances are is that somebody uh, in the group has been through what you're going through and can relate to it. Um, it maybe it's your coach. Maybe it's a teammate, um, and so that was, you know, the other part of I think was a really fundamental support system for me was joining a challenge group and doing the same type of exercise program as another group of, of people of my peers that um, were doing it along with me at the same time and having the same struggles. And uh, I, I tell you, we P90X2 was the first time that I did a challenge group. Uh, and the group that we had, there was only four of us, um, but everybody pushed each other, and it was funny because Gary, I remember, uh, came in and, and talked about how many of those llamas he did, and, and uh, probably not even pronouncing it right, but I mean, that was like a really, really tough exercise, and I was only trying the modified version. I wasn't even attempting to do it. And he came on and he's like, I did eight of them. And I, I was like, well, heck, i got to try this now. <laughs> I think he did. It was, a, it was the Renegade Row with a full Lalasana. Right. And Gary, Gary posted in the group, he's like, he's like, guys, I did it with 30 pounds today. And, and I hadn't done my workout yet by chance. And I was like, I'm the coach. Let him do more than me. <laughs> so I think I posted that night. I was like, I was like, I just did forty pounds on Renegade Rose with full of asanas. <laughs> it is cool, and you know, you brought up a great point about the, the support system and and getting involved in the challenge group. And and this is really important: is, is whoever invited you to this Google Hangout, if you want to get plugged into a, a support system or if you have any questions about getting started with a certain fitness program, or if you have questions about, you know, um, nutrition, you can come to me, you can come to Todd Cooper, or go to the person who invited you to this video. But if you want to get started somehow on making a change in your life, go to the person who invited you to this hangout. Um, but you brought up a great point with the support system is, that literally was a game changer for me, is because I... A lot of people already know my story, but I tried P90X seven times. And as soon as I joined a team and became a cable to someone other than myself, that was the game changer for me. So how important in the grand scheme of things would you say um, getting into some sort of support group, challenge group, or, or joining some sort of team, how important in your in a fitness journey? I mean, it's, it's critical. Um, it, for me, it certainly was. I, I just, you know, I'd spent the past 20 years up to that point in different exercise programs and gyms and trying to run and it hurt and doing this and that. And um, until you have a group that, you know, is, is really supportive and has a positive outlook backing you up, um, you know, you're, you're only as strong as your weakest moment. Uh, so... <laughs> And, and then bad habits form, and like you said, if you, if you don't have other people to hold you accountable, then there's only yourself that, that you're laying down. Um, the support groups for me 
have just been awesome. Uh, you know, starting with even before I was in an official challenge group, just being a part of of a fitness club, even online, most of these people I've never met before. I think in the two years now that I've been um, with Ripped Club, I've met three people um, face to face, um, okay. but dozens online, you know, and and on the phone and doing whatever it takes to make sure that we hold each other accountable and that we're there to support each other and, and so that's been really cool and um, and then turning around and, and you know helping other people paying it forward um, running mainly uh, ultimate reset challenge groups with my family and, and friends and people from work and things like this and, and seeing other people um, make positive steps towards their fitness and nutrition goals that, you know is so rewarding that um, it just kind of is like a snowball effect. So I would say, you know, that you hear all the time that it's 80% nutrition and 20% exercise is what gets you results. But I, I, I definitely think, I don't know what the percentage breakdown is, but, you know, you got to throw at least a good 30% in there for, for support. Um, so, you know, maybe it's a 50, 30, 20 thing or something like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to go back and, all of my blog posts, because of you, when I'm saying 80% nutrition, 20% workout, I'm going to have to go back and change it. 80% nutrition, 30% motivation and support, 20% workout. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool, man. So, obviously, you know, you mentioned that nutrition is usually 80% of your results. That's sort of like the common 80-20 rule. Um, you know, a lot of people see us talking about Shakeology all the time. Um, our challenge group, in our challenge group, almost everybody is committed to drinking Shakeology daily. How did, really just a glorified protein way, or do you, I know you drink it every day, but do you feel a difference, or did it make a difference in your, in your, in your whole grand scheme of your health and fitness? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I, I haven't been sick, <laughs> you know, I mean, Allergies I hadn't had. Um, my energy level is is you know nothing. It, it was nothing like it is now. Um, and you know once I started with Shakeology, I just there's never been a reason for me to stop drinking it. I did start um, using it uh, primarily because I wanted to lose the weight, um, mm -hmm. and I was trying to make a transition in my nutrition overall at that point so you know like I had said earlier I, I needed to do something drastic so you know I typically had breakfast tacos um, and uh, you know they make everything bigger here in Texas so <laughs> <laughs> breakfast tacos usually you know they come in in twos or at least that was the way I ordered oh, there's no other way to eat breakfast tacos than in I, right or otherwise <laughs> it's just a breakfast taco so um, you know, chorizo and bacon and all that stuff. So um, I just started using the Shakeology mainly as a breakfast replacement. And it was convenient. It's easy to whip together a shake and, you know, drink it in my car on the way to work and, and not have to worry about it. You know, I was just doing that instead of pulling through a drive-thru. Um, i got to ask, what, what's your favorite recipe? How do you make it? Uh, I, I have the, uh, the vegan chocolate um, with, uh, with almond milk. I do just plain, no sweetener, no, you know, it's like 30 calorie almond milk. Um, a scoop of uh, natural almond butter and a banana. Um, and then if I need to beef it up, you know, just get a few more calories, I'll put some Sun Warrior chocolate. Uh, plant-based protein in there. So it's an all-vegan uh, meal, at least one meal a day. You know, I'm, I don't necessarily eat that way all the time, but um, and I feel good about it. It energizes me, and, and, it, and I keep going. So, you know, like I said, where it was weight loss, and now it's just, you know, I know that if I have that, I have my bases covered as far as, you know, the fundamental nutrients and, and the servings of fruits and vegetables and then 
usually when you start your day that way, then you kind of continue and make good <laughs> choices throughout the rest of the day too. So. Yeah, that's true. So now you coach yourself. You're 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 on my team. You're a Rift Club coach. Um, for me personally, coaching was becoming a coach really really affected my results. Um, and, I, and if you've read any of my posts on becoming a coach, you you'll know how it affected my results. But a coach for you. Um, do anything for the way you look at health and fitness. Uh, I know you love to help other people. Obviously, you're taking a vacation day. Uh, you're you're on a vacation day, and you still wanted to be on this call with us. You wanted to reschedule and share what you had to offer, which is awesome. Again, I appreciate it so much. Um, so it's obvious you love to help people. How did how did becoming a coach? Because I know a lot of people um, watching this might have gotten results or are getting results using you know P90X or Insanity. They're drinking psychology daily and don't think they can become a coach yet because they don't have their, I call it your final results. You're not comfortable sharing them with the world and putting yourself out there. So how do you, how does becoming a coach play into your whole journey? We're all a work in progress, first of all, right? I mean, we're all somewhere along our way in some form of a journey. So, um, you know, and I, and I did have those doubts at, at first, um, like many people do. You know, I didn't have the after picture that I would, you know, that I was ready to show everybody uh, and be really proud of. But I think that kind of um, it adds to um, the... Uh, you know the the I don't know you want to call it the integrity or whatever, but if you are walking alongside somebody and learning with them and growing with them and working towards a common goal, you know there's always going to be somebody that can learn from you, and there's always going to be somebody that you can learn from. So, you know, I'm not Tony Horton, and I never will be. <laughs> But does that mean that I can't help people? Absolutely not, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that, you know, when people start paying attention to what you're doing and asking you, um, it's a natural thing that you may be doing already, right? If you're giving people advice, if you're supporting people, even if you don't know the answer, but you're giving them positive encouragement, if you're... Um, you know, doing anything other than just thinking about yourself, then you're already coaching, right? Yeah. So, you know, formalizing it just gives you a framework that gives you tools and uh, an internal support group that actually makes it easier to help more people more effectively. So, you know, for me, this is, um, you know, it's not a money thing. I have a full-time job, and, and I, I can support my family fine. I don't intend to change that. But um, I've been able to make a positive impact on on my extended family's life, my parents, um, siblings. Um, you know, some of them have done the exact programs that I'm doing and have gotten results. Some of them have tried that, figured out it wasn't for them, but it led them to something else. Um, you know, so that's all good too. Um, the point is to is to get people moving, <laughs> to get people thinking about what they're putting into their bodies and what the impact on their health and um, really the impact to their families that they're that they're going to have long term by the choices that they're making today. So, coaching I think is is a great opportunity to to share the love, right? You know, to take what you've learned and pay it forward and help other people. Um, you know, the 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 trend of obesity in, in America is disturbing. It is, it is very disturbing. <laughs> and it's it, it's sad because it's preventable, preventable. And um, you know, I think that it's really about education and it's about sharing things that work. And it's not necessarily about being perfect, but it's about exchanging bad habits for good, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and trying to make better choices and 
even if you're making slow progress, make progress towards living a healthier life. So um, when I know that there are people watching what I'm doing and seeing if I'm going to follow through, uh, then, then yeah, that holds me more accountable too. Awesome. Well, Todd, I absolutely appreciate you getting on this call again. You know, you're on vacation, but you still you still came here and shared with us. We got three minutes left, and it doesn't look like there are questions on the website. Come on, guys! But there is one guy who was wondering how you you managed to change your tattoo from one side to the other. <laughs> you know, I swear, I I really, I really want to delay into that person, but I, I, I just told him what you're not seeing is that Todd's holding a camera in his left hand and he's taking his picture in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that one a lot. I think I'm going to have to actually Photoshop one of them just to reverse the image just to squash that, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think it happened when Beachbody posted my, uh, my P90X2 pictures on their web. You know, I got... I got a scar on my abdomen from having my appendix removed, and all these people are like, "Oh, it's Photoshop. Your scars on the other side. Oh, wait, it's that switch. It's a fake." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? You yeah. Hang out on Beachbody's pages to call people out on their Photoshop skills. <laughs> Beachbody is is a bunch of uh is a bunch of skilled Photoshoppers. Right. Right. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm, not, I'm still not sure how the tattoo relates to the waistline, but that's, yeah, we, I found an identical twin. Who just the only difference is that he has his tattoo on the other side of his chest. <laughs> Plead each other, one on the left, one on the right. <laughs> All right, Todd. Well, hey, man, again, I appreciate you being on here. Guys, again, if you want to get started, you know, joining a, a fit an online fitness challenge group, coaching is right for you and your goals, and you, you really want to pay it forward and help to the person who invited you to this hangout and ask him for more information. And you know, I hope you join us every week. I hope you'll be inviting a new person to share their story. Todd shared with us some awesome, awesome information on how he lost 40 pounds. Spartan races all over the place. We didn't really get into your training regimen for Spartan races, but know that it involves gravel and sand and running a lot of miles. <laughs> I mean, dead bodies through mud or something. I don't know. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. That's that's yeah. yeah. All right, <laughs> all right, Todd. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for coming on, man. All right, man. Thanks. Later. We'll see everybody later. Bye, guys.